Hey guys, we've got an interesting video on Wild Rift. So they are back with the tier list for patch 3.0b and I decided to make 3 tier lists in a row for patch 3.0, 3.0a and 3.0b which I don't normally do. I normally wait like a patch or two before I actually make another tier list. Now the reason is normally across like um um, you know, A patch and B patch, etc. Et Even sometimes from like, let's say 3.0 to 3.1, the changes really aren't so big. And yeah, there are a couple of shuffles here and there, but there are two reasons why I decided to make um, this tier list. Firstly, we're going to be in this patch for three weeks um, before patch 3.1 releases at the end of March. And secondly, you know, as you guys know, I've, I've got a new job, so... Um, I really haven't had too much time to play Wild Rift, and as a result, I don't have a lot of gameplay, and if I don't have gameplay, I can't really make content on commentary guides or complete guides. I have been playing, like, you know, like, during, like, my lunch breaks, playing solo queue in ranked, all that, etc. But, um, not too much time and not a lot of good gameplay for me to use. So, instead, I'm gonna try to put out other kinds of videos, like tier lists, and like you know, we're we having we have we have another non gameplay related discussion video coming up soon. But anyways, let's actually just jump straight into the barrel lane tier list. But uh, of course, disclaimer at the start: um, tier list is just my opinion. If you guys don't agree, you guys can of course voice it out in the comments below, and we can have a discussion on that. And of course, tier, uh, you can climb with uh, any champion regardless of where you're on the tier list, where it is on the tier list, I guess you could say. So let's just jump straight in. So firstly, Fiora is still the best uh, barrel laner in my opinion. Nothing uh, has really changed about her. Same goes with Renekton. And matter of fact, um, the, the, some rune changes did help Renekton, like for example, Hunter Genius, um, and even like the new Triumph, and even something like Second Wind. Like a lot of the new runes help barrel laners uh, Especially like second win helps a lot of Baron Lingers, but the thing about it is that technically if it helps one, it helps all because everybody can take it. So if both you and your opponent take it, it kind of cancels out, but yeah, that's just something to take into consideration. So Set, I've actually put in the S tier in my previous patch, but personally after um, facing him, I feel that even after the nerfs, he is still actually pretty good. And, you know, compared to like Fiora and like Renekton, I do think that he is kind of in the same caliber, at the same caliber as them in the same tier. Whereas Jace, I've actually dropped from the S plus tier to the S tier because after the nerf, surprisingly, I didn't think it would affect him too much because they really only nerfed like a bit of his base stats and like his um, enhanced or accelerated shock blast damage, which I didn't think would be too major considering his hammer form was very strong. But surprisingly, you can't actually feel the difference. So I'm dropping him down to the top of S tier for now, and we'll see how it goes when we get like to the next patch and the next tier list. But uh, for now, I think he's just barely, like barely not in the S plus tier, kind of like that. So Riven uh, still feels really strong. Malphite and Ukong, great team fighters. Darius and Garen just, um, you know, always up there. Same goes for Camille, and. Uh, as you guys know, I'm not going to really discuss every single champion because it's going to take a little bit too long. I'm just going to discuss some of the interesting picks, uh, interesting champions, I guess you could say, and changes that I've made. So Graves at the bottom of the A plus tier, I still think might be underrated, might be a little bit hidden OP because Graves scales very, very well into the late game. And I have played quite a bit of Graves uh, recently and on multiple occasions, on one occasion I got a Penta, and on like three other occasions I barely didn't get a Penta. Like I got a Quadra and one kill stolen, or I, you know, killed three people and died with two people on one HP, something like that. So I really think Graves is actually very, very strong with like Black Cleaver into crit build, uh, kind kind of Graves, and I feel that Graves in the Baron Lane could also be really, really good. And aside from that, something, another pick I want to point out is actually Timo. So Timo, I used to put him in the C tier, but. Um, I actually think he, if you know how to play Teemo, he isn't that bad. He's kind of like a cheese pick who is very good in lane. Um, and if you're a good Teemo player, you can really destroy people in the lane. But the thing is, if you get to mid and late game on Teemo, you're a very single target and you're, and you're not very useful to your team, basically. You become mainly an annoyance. You're, even when you're fed, you are, aren't really a huge threat to the enemy team. So, uh, Teemo will never go above the A tier in my opinion unless he's has completely broken numbers or something and yeah so in the C tier uh, of course we still have Nasus and Singe there but I actually moved Kale from the upper part of the C tier to the, basically the worst Baron lane champion now 
don't get me wrong, um, this is going to be a trend like for Kale in general in tier list, which is that Kale, when she gets to late game, like level 15 and like 3 to 4 items, she is really really strong. But the problem is number 1, you almost never get to that stage of the game. And number 2, basically before you reach that stage of the game, you are a burden on your team. Because basically you are only like half a champion and you don't really do much and you can't really show up to like objective fights so basically our team is playing 4v5 for the red for like the first 15 minutes of the game before you reach level 15 for items so really kale just really isn't that good and it kind of hurts your team if you play kale so that's uh, it for the baron lane now we're gonna move on to talking about the jungle alrighty so now moving on to the jungle now not a lot has changed and honestly in the entire tier list from baron lane to support not too much has changed but there are a couple of things i, I like to point out in each tier list so this shouldn't be too long of a video but yeah so lee sin still clearly the best jungler kha'zix uh closely behind them this um the top two junglers haven't really changed in forever lee sin uh even when he got like nerfs and even like a small buff on his uh, ultimate damage um, has simply always been the best like he's just so good in wild rift because firstly he has a free targeted dash on his w and he also can build proto belt for even more mobility and more playmaking potential so really lee sin in wild rift is even better than lee sin in uh lol pc which is already very good so lee sin pretty much will always be the best jungler or one of the best junglers and unless he's like completely nerfed to the ground but he doesn't do any damage in the early game or something like that now um two things to take note of i actually removed kale from the jungle because obviously kale was broken on release people played her in the jungle so she's gone if she was in the jungle tier list she would be the worst jungler after nasus so another thing to note is i also actually removed jace now after jace got nerfed and he did feel you know a little bit weaker quite a little bit weaker actually i haven't actually really seen anybody play jace jungle maybe like once but um in fact jace top lane i don't even see it that much anymore and I play in like Diamond, um, and Jace in the jungle, I actually honestly saw him like maybe once. So I don't have enough sample size to really judge him. So I pretty much removed him off the tier list. But if I were to guess where he would have been, maybe at the top of A plus tier somewhere towards the upper part of A plus tier maybe. But yeah. So aside from that, the rest of the tier list generally remains the same except for the A tier, where I actually firstly added in Diana. So now Diana is actually a viable jungler her her first kill is clear is a little bit slow but you can do a three cam clear and get to like skull a little bit late um so it's not the best however um diana is pretty strong of a champion right now so in the mid lane tier list slightly bit of a spoiler alert she is an s plus so she is pretty strong of a champion at the moment she has a huge team fight ultimate and the slight problem with playing diana in the jungle is that her teamfight ultimate sometimes is the main engage for her team and if you are the jungler you don't always want to be the main engage if you're playing of course something like a ramus or like a you know a mundo or maybe even a zin Zhao uh, or a Lee sin sometimes you can be the engage but playing a relatively squishy jungle like diana like when you go in it's really hard to get yourself out um unless you pretty much kill everybody and don't die uh, having a jungler like that is a little bit dangerous because a lot of times i play tested diana jungle quite a bit and um i found that a lot of times i i die um in the fight but my team wins the fight because of my ultimate and they sometimes have to flip the objective because we don't have a smite but generally the other jungler is dead as well which i'm not in love with so i think diana maybe maybe a tier for now um but you know she might be better or worse than what i think she is and number two is ramus i moved ramus up from the c tier just because of how much of an ad mana we have at the moment now top laners are generally always ad there aren't too many viable ap junglers there's like pretty much evelyn uh, morgana and maybe diana if you count that and most people don't even count diana as a jungler and yeah so pretty much in the mid lane is normally ad as well with the exception of a few like diana katarina galio etc and obviously adcs are, are ad and tank supports are pretty common not Enchanters don't really count as AP damage because they don't really do too much damage. So we're in a very strong AD meta at the moment, which makes Ramus incredibly strong because he pretty much counters AD. Now, I had had a couple of matches where I had a full AD team going into a Ramus, and 
the rammers just roll straight into our faces and most of the time yeah we do manage to kill him but focusing rammers or rammers getting in our faces pretty much lost us the fight because like a caitlin or whoever can free fire from the background and pretty much destroy your whole team so rammers in my opinion actually very underrated in the current meta i think he probably is way better than what most people think he is now of course he's clear as sucks but just because of how the meta is at the moment i do believe he is really strong now aside from that pretty much the rest of the tier list uh, has actually remained the same now set still a plus tier he, his jungle care not the best but he is still really strong as a champion so he is still up there um, I actually moved Olaf up, I forgot to mention that, from the A to the bottom of the A plus tier, but I feel like Olaf and Jax, uh, Jax of course did get a nerf on his passive attack speed, so uh, these two champions I think are a little bit coin flippy because they kind of are stat stick, so if they do manage to get a lead and get a hit in the early game, they pretty much snowball and just stat check you um, and pretty much just dominate the game just because they have more stats than you, but if they fall behind in the earlier stages of the game, it's pretty much the opposite where they don't have enough stats to really do anything, and they just become very, very weak. You don't feel useful at all. So I kind of had them at the bottom of A plus tier because they do have the potential to be monsters, but at the same time, they do have the potential to fall flat on their faces as well. So with that out of the way, we can move on to the mid lane. All right, so now the mid lane. I still think Zed is the best, pretty much the best mid laner. I think Zix is also really, really good, really up there. Some people move Zix down to the S tier. I don't think so. I think Zix is still S plus. Diana, as we mentioned, is a pretty strong mid laner. I also play tested Diana in the mid lane. And I do think that she is really uh, strong. And in the AD meta, now I'm just sprinkling this in as a tip. Crystalline Reflector on Diana is pretty OP. Now, I, I went into a full AD team with Diana and I bought Crystalline Reflector second item and I was so tanky, I, I just couldn't believe how tanky I was. That item is actually really underrated uh, on a lot of champions. But yeah, Diana is really good at the moment. Now, Galio actually moved down from the S plus tier to the S tier for two reasons. Firstly, I think I overrated him a little bit. He especially, and secondly, now it's a AD meta and Galio kind of counters AP. So, Galio into like Diana, Zix, uh, Ori, or like Cat, still very strong, of course, because he counters AP in the lane matchup. But generally, we have so much AD in the meta at the moment. Galio is not in too strong of a spot. Now, of course, just building full damage Galio. Uh, and him being like a tanky character even when you build damage with a lot of CC is still very strong Which is why I still put him at the top of the S tier But I don't think we can really consider him S plus tier considering how he kind of is not Really suited for the meta in terms of you know being a kind of a champion who wants to fight Magic damage, but it's a AD meta at the moment. So yeah uh, Ori and Kat still uh, up there in my opinion Kat is always going to be S tier um, not any lower, not any higher, as I mentioned a lot of times, because if you're good at her, you can always make her work. But CC just hard counters, her, especially point and click like Vayne, uh, Condemn, or Pantheon uh, stun. So, in my opinion, she can never be S plus tier or, or A plus tier for that matter. Corky still very underrated, really good. Akshan, I actually moved up from the A plus tier to the S tier because I play a lot of Akshan mid and I honestly think he's underrated. Uh, if you're good at Akshan mid, you can actually get a lot of solo kills in lane just because his damage is still really insane on his E. You get like a good swing. That's like, you know, two third to three quarter of their health gone. You just swallow up with a couple of auto attacks and a Q and they're pretty much dead, like 100 to zero. And if you chipped away at them with your, um, with your, auto attacks and your Q's already and they're at like 3 quarter you know, health or so uh, you can actually just all in them and they're pretty much just dead so Akshan just really strong and of course the revives in the late game or just any stage of the game is just pretty strong in general now Jace he got nerfed but I still think I honestly still think he can you know barely hang on to the S here uh, in mid lane now of course he was only really played in the mid lane because he's really strong but honestly you look at him into a lot of these um, mid lane champions um, like Zed Diana, Galio, Cat are all melee, so he does have a lot of good matchups in the mid lane because he is ranged. Uh, he, of course, has a melee form as well, but he is generally a ranged champion, and he's relatively like a uh, tanky in terms of he's like a fighter, a bruiser. So he does pretty well into a lot of uh, mid lane matchups. So I still think he can be like bottom of, of um, S tier, and A tier, A plus tier. Nothing has actually changed, and in the um, A tier. Pretty much nothing has changed as well. Fizz is uh, Fizz got nerfed, but in my opinion, he's still the bottom of A tier because he still can one shot people. And if you're good at him, you can still snowball. And the nerfs probably won't affect you too much uh, on snowballing on Fizz. 
Um, of course, get, maybe getting that first initial kill might be a little bit more of a challenge, but I don't think the nurse will hurt Fizz too badly. And the next change is Kale has dropped to C tier, which is the Aurelion Soul tier. Now, I really think Kale... I wouldn't even say Kale is the worst champion in the game, but I really think Kale is the worst champion to have on your team. Now, what's the difference in saying that is, as I explained in the Baron Link, really you're playing 4v5 until 15 minutes plus when Kale reaches level 15 with like 4 items, which really sucks for her team because pretty much you're going to be at a disadvantage at, at like the first 2 to 3 dragons at both Rift Perils and maybe even like the first Baron if the enemy goes for it early. And yeah, although I would say that playing her mid lane is better than playing her top lane because it's a shorter lane, so you have the safety of the tower at least. But really, Kale is not in a good spot now. Her early game was nerfed and her late game was gutted, so not too strong at the moment. But with that out of the way, we can move on to ADCs. Alright, here we have ADCs. I don't know why I keep repeating myself, but obviously not too much changes. At the bottom um, three rows, you can see the uh, APC tier list, which hasn't really... Uh, change the Ziggs, Corky still the best, followed by Ori, and then um, Vegar and Bran, very situational. And Seraphine AP has been, you know, coming back a little bit, but not too much yet. I haven't uh, played against it or as it yet, so I haven't included it in my tier list. But yeah, Kai'Sa, Lucian, and Draven still the best champions in my opinion. And Draven will always, like, be S plus tier if you're good at him, in my opinion as well. So, uh, in the S tier pretty much remain the same. A plus tier, still we, have, we still have MF there, which are really good for team fight wombo combo comms, but pretty situational in that sense. Jinx, not as bad as most people think she is, in my opinion. I still think they're way worse than her, like Jin, Ash, and Tristana. Senna, I actually moved down from the A plus tier, um, and by Senna, I mean fasting Senna, where you don't take the farm. Because Senna, of course, her scaling on her souls did get nerfed a couple of patches ago, and you can't actually really feel it, uh, like... Senna really doesn't feel so strong anymore, but uh, all the same, she skills really well. So when you get late enough, like, you know, 60 plus, 80 plus stacks with, like, 2 to 3 items, you still feel pretty strong. Um, so Senna's still pretty viable. Akshan, um, not the most, not the best in the ADC role. Way better in mid where you can solo kill a lot easier, which plays to Akshan's strengths in the early game. But he's still better than, like, you know... Farming Senna, uh, Ash, Tristana, and Jin. Now, they, those three still have the same problem where Ash is has too little damage, mainly utility. Jin has good early game but very poor late game, doesn't scale well at all. And Tristana is number one single target, number two, really hard to target the correct person with your bomb. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for ADCs. And yeah, so now we can move on to supports. Alright, so finally we have supports. Now, I had Yumi at the bottom of S plus tier the last time, and now Yumi got buffed to the moon. So obviously, I'm going to have to put her at the top of the S plus tier. Now, we have a caveat. Now, the thing about Yumi is that no matter how good she is, is pretty much you're relying on your team to carry you. Because no matter how good of a Yumi you are, you need to attach to someone and just empower them to the point where they cannot you know, be defeated, something like a Vayne or a Jinx for the ADCs, and mainly your top laner, like maybe a Olaf, a, a Darius, or a jungler like Master Yi, for example, you, you need some good champion to attach to, maybe even something like Yasuo, there's so many good champions to attach to, but the point being, you need a good champion to attach to, and basically, if your entire team is feeding, uh, you're gonna get destroyed, basically, because they're gonna get destroyed, and therefore, after that, you are gonna get destroyed, so... She is the best in like a duo queue or trio queue or even five man for instance. Like basically playing with somebody who you know, um, that can, is good and can and can you know, you can attach to to buff them up. That's really when she's top of S plus tier. In solo queue, she she, and I know this is a solo queue tier list, and I do put it as a solo queue tier list. But honestly, I feel like in solo queue she could she is still S plus tier, but maybe not the best champion. Like I would say maybe she's bottom of S plus tier. I guess you could say, um, just because you don't know if your teammates are reliable. So therefore, you don't know if Yumi is that good of a pick. Because if your teammates all are bad, means you can't really do much anyways. So obviously, Yumi and... Uh, not Yumi. N Nami and Lulu still really good. Same goes for Thresh, uh, Insane Playmaker. And pretty much the entire rest of the support tier list, nothing has actually changed at all. Now, I will say that supports like from... S plus to S and from S to A plus and from A plus to A are all really, really close. So sometimes, like, you know, you could move, like, for example, Leona into A plus tier. 
uh, and like for example Senna down into A and I wouldn't really complain too much like I think they're all really really close like moving up or down one one tier I think they're all really close but anything below A meaning like the B and the C tier I think aren't really very viable as support in the current meta now of course with the slight exception of Blitzcrank who if you're really good will kind of always be a good support uh, you could say to find picks and all but yeah that's pretty much all for the patch 3.0 B tier list. So thank you guys for watching the video and goodbye.